John Gray. My friend, how are you today? I'm doing great, Bob. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing wonderful, man. Hey, you know, thank you first and foremost for uh, being a guinea pig, man. You know, this is our this is the first time on Jazz Piano Skills that I am interviewing a student. You know, typically we always, you know, in these in these formats, we're constantly bringing on experts in the field, you know, like other teachers and educators and getting their perspective and insight. And believe it or not, I've had many folks uh, over the past year say, you know, Bob, you actually should bring on some students and allow them to share with them their journey and and their uh, successes, their frustrations and um, and their whole experience. Because quite honestly, other students uh, share in those experiences as well. And so, you know, I, I brought it up to you and you were game and, and said, yes, I'll do it. And here we are. So I just want to say right from the get go here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I love I love being positioned as, you know, I brought on all these experts. Now here's John. <laughs> the direct yeah, opposite right. of an expert. Well, you know, I didn't mean you know I didn't mean it like that, right? But but you get my, you get my point. You know, of I'll tell you, yeah. I'll tell you, kind of, you know, what the catalyst behind this was. Um, you know, I had an educator, uh, a piano teacher in college and graduate school that she she would make all of us show up for the piano lesson an hour before our piano lesson. So, in other words. If your piano lesson was at one o'clock in the afternoon, I'd have to be there at one o'clock in the afternoon before my piano lesson at two. So I'd, I would actually have to sit in on your piano lesson. Yeah. And um, her thinking, her logic to this, which I absolutely get, was that all of us as students wrestle with the same, you know, the same issues and wrestle with the same struggles. And the idea was that it was going to be a lot easier for me to sit across the room and see what she was talking about while teaching you, you know, that I could say, okay, I get it now. I see, I see what she's talking about. It's so much easier to see it on you than it is on me when I'm in the middle of the lesson myself. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And it, it kind of takes the, uh, you get to, you get to watch someone else in their learning process. It takes that pressure right. away. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. So, you know, the, she, she was doing that and I found that to be enormously beneficial. So that's kind of the spirit behind what we're doing here today, having you come on as a student um, to kind of share again, your experiences and your background and your story. Uh, because I know there's many listeners right now that are going to connect and go like, man, I totally get that, you know? So, um, so with that being said, I would love for you to kind of, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you and kind of let you share a little bit about you, your background, how you got into music. You know, did you do, did you get into it as an adult or did you start as a child? Um, kind of, sh kind of share your journey with us and then we'll go from there. So yeah, the, the microphone is yours, my friend. All right, cool. So um, it all started on a rainy day in 1976. <laughs> uh, somehow, <laughs> somehow I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, so, uh, you know, I had a normal uh, musical upbringing. I went to decent schools and there was a music program. And so I learned the recorder. You know, I learned how to read the treble clef, uh, sing in the choirs uh, at all ages. And, and it was, you know, it was pretty normal scholastic uh, education. Um, I also, you know, my mom insisted on piano lessons. Uh, I was kind of into it. Uh, when I was young, you know, I, I played for a couple of years. We moved around quite a bit and kind of that sort of broke broke up the chain of, of me staying with those lessons. But but I learned enough during piano lessons to know how to read, you know, treble and bass clef uh, and, you know, play maybe to level two in my method book. Right. So uh, so I learned enough to be dangerous and and <laughs> and it. The good news with that was uh, that that is a really good foundation. If you if you can do that, you know, I think I think you're not starting from zero when you come back to it. So so that Correct. was an important uh, an important thing I I did, even though I, it stopped when I was in like fifth grade. Some of that stuff stuck with me. So um, then as I got a little bit older, I was more into sports, uh, more into right. trying to be a cool kid and, and not not practicing any instruments. So uh, through 
through high school, I uh, didn't really do any music. Uh, I did love, I was always the music guy in my group in terms of listening. I was the one looking for what's cool and what's different and, and trying to share it with my friends. And I was always a little bit on the, the edge, you know, I, I kind of knew, um, I had older siblings, so I knew what was cool ahead of my age. And, and, and then I would share yeah. that with my friends and, uh, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed educating myself about music, um, you know, pop, jazz, hip hop. I was a totally, total omnivore. So um, I, I, I never thought one genre was cooler than the other. I liked right, them good. all equally. And, um, and so, so again, that was another kind of important part. Um, and that continued through college. Uh, but late in college, I, uh, I got into kind of the, the dance music scene. So house, techno, um, and fell head over heels in love with the, all that music. And of course, I wanted to be at the guy at the front of the room spinning the records, not just one of the people out on the floor of the club. So, um, so I bought, you know, turntables, started to buy records, and learned how to mix, um, and and learned the art and skill of of DJing. And wow. um, and I had I had a buddy of mine that that showed me basically how to match beats. And once I could do that, it was like you know I was stuck in completely and. Um, you know, I was, I, I kept doing that into my, you know, early adulthood. I graduated college, got a real job, but sort of did that on the side. Um, it was kind of an underground scene, right? It was, I was not doing weddings. Uh, it was like a basement club with one, <laughs> right. with one light bulb, you know, and like, right. packed. <laughs> um, but it was, it was really, it was really cool. And I, I really, you know, cherished that experience hanging out with, uh, the cool part about it was you did not need formal training to do that. Right. Well, so everybody right. in there was, uh, there was, uh, there was no elitism, right. If you, if you could do right. it, you could do it. And, um, and so I, I really got really love that scene, but I kind of aged out of it. Right. Uh, it's hard to, hard to do the dance club at night and corporate career by day. So, right. Right. So eventually it kind of drifted away and a, a friend of mine, while I was doing that had given me, uh, an old keyboard of his, it was a 61 key, uh, you know, unweighted, just come, you know, really cheap thing. And, and I was like, sure, I'll take that. And, um, started, started just tinkering around with it. And, and next thing I knew I was, I wanted to play piano. I, I, I wasn't interested in the keyboard aspects. I was interested in piano for some reason. Um, and, and so I, I, I went back to what I knew. I bought a method book and I just started at right. page one. Right. And, right. uh, right. you know, Mary had a little lamb, uh, you know, C D E. Uh and right. and I just retaught myself from scratch. Um, right. how to read, you know, how to read basic music and um and I I got to the point where I was like, this is awesome, I love it. And uh so I bought a, a real upright piano. Um and then I was kind of off and running uh with with that era of of kind of my musical growth. And um yeah, I I stuck with uh with mostly classical because I felt like at a lower skill level, uh when I was an adult beginner, you could sound better, right? If you were playing right. that type of music. So right. I didn't I didn't feel right. like I sounded like a beginner uh with some of those pieces and um at that age that really mattered to me. I wanted to sound good when my friends asked me to play. So uh I would <laughs> I would con I would just learn progressively more difficult uh, or interesting classical pieces, um, and I got to like you know kind of a, I guess an intermediate level doing that. Yeah, and all of this is without a teacher, right? You're just that's you're just right. Picking, yeah, you just got the book. You got a method book. You got a repertoire book with some pieces in it. You're like, man, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna honker down and learn how to do this one at a time, one piece at a yeah. time, one measure at a time. Right. Right. <laughs> What, yeah. a, what a painful process <laughs> it, it was. And, and, you know, when it started, I was like, this is what learning the piano is like. Um, but, yeah, and you know what? And that's what most and, and that is what most people think learning the piano is like. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what, what the method people... book says it is. Right. Correct. That's right. And, and the method book couldn't be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's been yeah. teaching millions yeah, of children right. for however right. many years. Right. This is the yeah. way it's done. Right. Exactly. OK, so. So what clicked? You got into jazz, right? I mean, yeah. all of a sudden you started like listening to jazz or yeah. Well, in, how did that happen? Yeah, good question. So uh, all all alongside this journey, right? I remained a musical omnivore. So okay. but the things I listened to are not always parallel to the things that I would try to create. 
Um, and so uh, jazz was always a, a big part of my diet musically uh, into adulthood. I think uh, Bill Evans, uh, one of his <laughs> albums was kind of, uh, yeah, you know, it was a quiet album. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but uh, whenever, you know, kind of the night was over and I was winding down, I would, I would flip that on and, and just kind of, it would just, you know, relax me. And so I always thought of jazz as relaxing music, um, right. as, as music that makes me feel comfortable. Um, and, uh, I've always appreciated jazzy sounds when they show up in other genres. So when you're right. listening to hip hop right. and the chords behind it are jazzy, or you're listening right. to a band like Steely Dan, who I'm obsessed right. with and always have been, right. uh, right. you know, they use very advanced jazz harmony. And so, yeah. Uh, so I always had an appreciation for jazz and, uh, and specifically I, I loved hearing chords being voiced in unique ways, right? Right. Where it right. sounded like there was not a lot of movement happening, but yet the mood would shift when the chord would change. And, and I always thought that was like magic. Um, yeah. and so, so on the listening side, I was very into jazzier sounds. It just did, it did not seem like something it seemed a million miles away on the keyboard. Um, right. I was, I was busy trying to learn a Chopin prelude, you know, and which, right. um, with what well, I think you call it the dot button approach. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 That dot means push that button. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of that. <laughs> right. And that's a lot. And that's a hard, that's a long road, isn't it? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough haul. It is. Well, well, when you, when, when you're learning, when you look at, at a sheet music arrangement of one of your favorite jazz tunes and you just see all the notes on the page, you're like, Oh my God, yeah, I can't yeah, play right. that. <laughs> like it's, yeah. There's a million right. notes in the first, you know, eight bars. Well, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that, well, that's right. You know, you mentioned Bill Evans. So if you go out and get a, a book of Bill Evans transcriptions or whatever, you open up and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going back to Chopin, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it can be, it can be o o overwhelming. No doubt yeah. about it. Right. So, okay. So you got great jazz taste. You're listening to Bill Evans and checking him out. And then, uh, so you started going, you started getting more into the, into the jazz scene. And, and this is kind of interesting, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you started listening to jazz piano skills. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Well, there's, so there's, there's a little bit of a story about how I ended up there. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the pandemic happened, right. Uh, right, everything shut right. down during COVID and, uh, I thought if there's ever a time to restart the process of learning the piano, uh, I'm, I'm in it right now because it literally we right. had to close our business like we didn't have anything to do <laughs> for right. days on end. And so, so uh, you're going to take advantage. You're going to take advantage of uh, of COVID. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. uh, so I decided to try composing a little bit, um, and uh, I, I learned very quickly how much I don't know. I think I made a I made a couple of credible uh, attempts, right? Um, using the internet kind of as my guide, uh, right. some YouTube videos, uh, some very basic theory that I could kind of pull together from from what was online, and and I I composed a couple of pieces of music um, that you know they they sound okay, right? Uh, right. And um, but I knew I was like I was like I need to know more, right? I do not have the uh, I don't have the language uh, that I want. And so, so I hit, I, I did what everybody does. I went to YouTube and I was like, there is surely <laughs> enough information out here for me to learn this. Right. And, um, and very quickly, it's like, you know, learn, uh, learn your pentatonics in five easy <laughs> steps in 10 minutes. And then the guy's like, right, use right. this hand grip, do this. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> And, yeah. and so, so it quickly seemed Im kind of impossible. So I was like, I was like, let's go, let's, let's find podcasts. You know, I'll just walk, I'll, I'll listen while I'm walking my dog. And, um, and there's, there's a lot of jazz piano podcasts out there. Uh, yeah. um, and you know, that is kind of just, just every morning trying to find something new to listen to is kind of how I stumbled upon, uh, upon yours. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it, I think that's kind of interesting because you you had listened to jazz piano skills and then you then you reached out to me, you know it's interesting because you're just down the road. You're in Austin, Texas. Right. I'm up here in, up here in Dallas, and uh, I think 
what what you do? Send me you sent me an email introducing yourself and yeah, wanting to possibly uh, entertain the thoughts of you know talk a little bit about um, connecting and and studying together. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I had your your podcasts were were kind of like pretty self contained lessons, um, yeah. and I I appreciated the way you broke things down. Uh, really just worked with the way that I like to learn. Um, I thought you you explain the artistic stuff uh, in terms of technique very well. And then the technique stuff, you always made sure it connected to the artistry. And so I, I never felt like it was all one or all the other. Um, and I, I remember you had an episode on triads, uh, which right. is where my where where I was at that time. I was kind of learning uh, like how to play triads without having to stop and pick out each note. Right. Um, and, uh, and I followed, I followed the lesson and then I took it through all 12 keys and it stuck and I was like, oh, I just learned something. Like I really learned it. (laughs) I'm not just reading it off the page. Right. And, and so, uh, and so that's, that's kind of what made me reach out, um, was that lesson. I followed it and I was like, dang, (laughs) progress. It really happened. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's awesome. So yeah, you reached out and and then we did connect, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been great. You know, you and I've been uh, studying jazz piano together now for two, a year and a half, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's over a year, but I think it was July of last year and it's it's late August now. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. So, all right. So let's get into a little bit about, um, you know, how you study and how you practice, um, because this is really the core of what I want to get get at today. So I guess I'll start. I'm just going to start firing off some questions to you. Okay. Yep. And then we'll and then we'll we'll go from there. So if you could uh, somehow explain to us a little bit about um, how you thought about music prior to us connecting, prior to you kind of taking advantage of COVID and getting back into the study of music and jazz uh, specifically how how has it changed from how you approach practicing back with the method book uh, and the Chopin etudes to now with the various skills uh, at jazz piano skills that that you're studying can you kind of compare and contrast for us uh, those two worlds yeah yeah so so I think I think when we first talked I said Mike I want to have a command of the keyboard I don't just want to have a command of one piece of music, right? So, right, right. Um, so, so, you know, we started with uh, with chords, you know, in in all the different yes. ways, and uh, you know, I had never had someone guide me through that, so that always seemed mysterious and impossible. So, I, I would always default back to, I'll just learn this piece of music, and and so that learning this piece of music practice to me was open the page, like, okay, which, which part can't I play yet of this sheet of music? Let's play that measure as slow as possible and then slowly speed it up. Um, and so, you know, by the time you can play that measure, you are done hearing it. You're tired of it. And so <laughs> I, <laughs> I found myself getting tired of my, of my own, of the stuff I right. was learning before I could even finish it. Um, right. Whereas now, now the, the difference is there's there's kind of a goal for the day, right? And um, and when I when I sit sit down at the keyboard, I've got the vocabulary um, that I'm working with on that day, and I I try to stick within the framework of kind of what I've already decided to practice on that day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So important. Uh, you know, you mentioned something just a few minutes ago. You know, like when you got you you would be thinking of the chord world right or mm. like you know we started with the harmonic structures of music when we connected that's the very first thing because you said you wanted a command of the keyboard mm-hmm. and i said well we, we we have to start with the, the the foundation right that all that everything rests upon and that's the harmonic structure so we immediately started tackling the you know our major and dominant minor half diminished and diminished sounds our, our diminished chords and uh y- you're right. Most people don't realize. I, I think when most people sit and think about chords and music, um, they tend to think in terms of this uh, black hole kind of effect, right? That there's endless number of harmonic shapes and endless number of possibilities, which which you and I have 
have discussed this in detail um, on, on many occasions that, you know, having a skewed understanding of of the of music re, musical reality can be very depressing, right? Because usually it's it, it, usually it's skewed to the way to the side of endless possibilities and endless possibilities. I don't know about you, but if if there's endless possibilities, that's kind of depressing to me. You know, that seems like how do how am I going to learn endless possibilities? Yeah, yeah, and I think that that gets confirmed when you again you pull open a method book or a lead sheet. And you don't see the C chord that you know. You see C minor seven, you know, flat nine, and you see all these numbers, and you're like, you're like, I have to learn that. Like, there's there's 90 chords just on this one page, um, and you right. don't know that they're connected or they're connected to the scale. And you know, once you once you have those fundamentals, it's just a little bit extra to learn those extensions, right? You, it just seems like right. this impossible infinite pool of of numbers to know. Right. And so, you know, for us to tackle right away, you know, the um, uh, the 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 12, the mathematical side of music, right? Mm -hmm. The 12 note, our tuning system consists of 12 notes. Those 12 notes produce five primary sounds. Those primary sounds consist of 60 chords. I don't know about you, but when we when we attack that right from the beginning, was that not liberating for you? I mean, I remember I remember as a kid when I was learning that that was very liberating for me. Absolutely. Well, well, it's, it's attainable, right? It's, it's attainable. uh, <laughs> you can, you can sit down. There's five, five days in a week. Uh, you know, let's take two days where we, we're not necessarily focusing on the four core fundamentals. So but five days of, of like real practice a week, you can, you can start to see how you, uh, how you approach those goals, right? It's, it's attainable. And, and that was important for sure. Yep, absolutely. Because now all of a sudden you have a you you can see that there's a beginning and there's a middle and there's an end. You know, yeah. the, 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 you can like you said, it's obtainable. You can accomplish this. You know, so um, so what what were you hoping to accomplish b back in the old days, right, with the method book versus what you're hoping to accomplish now? How has that changed? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, you know. When I was when I was learning music piece by piece, the, it was important for me to play the most difficult piece I could. Right? I wanted to push. I That's wanted to push the boundaries. The yeah, right. I wanted to put. I wanted to sound great uh, on this one piece because I didn't have a whole lot else. So I wanted to. I wanted the one thing I could do to sound really <laughs> impressive. And and uh, now it's like I'm I'm okay with uh, with sounding a little more basic because I'm, I feel like I'm gaining command of a broad set of, of skills that are, that are more applicable. Right. So, right. Uh, yeah. So I've, I have no, I have no problem going back to basics because I can see them as a the foundation for something. Right. Yeah. Because now I think you're at a point uh, you've come to the realization that uh, it's much better to play something that may be on more of the simplistic side, but be musically fantastic than to play something that would be challenge incredibly difficult music wise and sound like you suck. You, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Th those are two. You're, I'd, I'd much <laughs> rather, I'd, <laughs> I'd much rather play something within the confines of my skills and my ability. Right. And sound very musical than to try to tackle something very difficult and then struggle with it. Yeah. Well, and, and to have the ability to make a creative choice at the keyboard in the moment, rather than right. playing what you've memorized by rote. So right. that to me is, is that's the most important difference is, uh, right. is I'm, I'm making a creative choice with every chord I play on, on which voicing I use, uh, you know, how, how fast I play them, the rhythmic uh, aspect. And um, it's, it's just way more, it feels like you have way more of a command of the instrument when you're able to make those choices in the moment rather than just kind of repeating what you've memorized. Yeah, there, because there's uh, there, what you were doing prior to studying jazz, uh, you were, like you mentioned earlier, the dot button approach, right? Where What, what I call the dot button approach. You know, you've got a piece of music in front of you. You're going to, that dot means push that button. That dot means push that button. But you don't see any relationship between those dots at all. They're just right. dots. 
right? So there's no understanding beneath the surface other than those dots. So now music has become just very much a mechanical process for you. There, and, and no one studies music, I promise you. I've been teaching for a long time. No one's come into my office and said, you know, I really want to study music because I just love, I want to be mechanical. <laughs> you know, it, 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 everybody comes in wanting to study music because music is a creative outlet. It's an artistic endeavor. And, every, and if it's reduced down to this dot means push this button, then it remains very mechanical and nothing even remotely close to creative or artistic. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and so, yeah. So now what you're doing, what's a thrill from, you know, this side, you know, as your as your teacher working with you and teaching is to see how you are just uh, developing uh, in leaps and bounds with this whole aspect of getting a command of uh, of the skills, the skills, the various skill sets, harmonically, melodically, rhythmically, and now being able to combine those skill sets to be able to express yourself artistically on the instrument. It's just, it's a joy to, to be a part of and to watch that develop and unfold for you. Yeah. Well, well, you know, when we started, uh, and you know, once I got kind of a command of, of the chords and then we started learning a few progressions and obviously the two five one is the kind of the main thing that you really want to have nailed down and, and have comfortable and confident on 12 keys. And, and so, that took a while to get that and then and then to be able to play from from the notes from that scale on top of that uh and do that in a way that's you know you're not reading it off the page and instead you're just playing kind of what you're hearing in the, that moment right. that is right. a completely different endeavor sitting at the piano um right than it than it used to be so so no matter you know no matter where we go from here uh the fact that i can sit down and play a two, five, one in my left hand, play a pretty melody in my right hand that I came up with on the spot. Uh, that's like, that's wizardry to me <laughs> that, that used to, I, I, I had no concept that that was, I, that, that felt a million miles away when I started and right. now it's now it's, that's how I relax and have fun at the keyboard now. That's very, that's very, very cool, man. So, okay. So let's, you, you mentioned, um, something earlier where you said, uh, you know, when you sit down to practice, you you you, you said you determine what you're going to practice, right, uh, for the day. So let's that that's a that's a big statement, and I that's something that I want to I want us to take the time to expound upon a little bit here. So just take a few minutes right now and kind of share with everybody how you structure your practicing. Right. Because there's a lot of balls. Right. There's a lot of when you study jazz, there are a lot of balls to juggle in the air. Right. Yeah. From, you know, chords, the scales, the voicings, the rhythms, the transcriptions, the tunes. I mean, there are a lot of moving parts and we can all become quite uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed with all the moving parts. So how do you handle that? How do you structure your practicing? Yeah. Yeah. So so from a practical standpoint, I'm sure most of the listeners are in the same boat, they're, they're not professionals yet. Uh, and they probably right. have jobs, right? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And things get in the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you have a limited time, uh, budget to spend at the piano and, right. and um, so, so the first thing is choosing when you're going to spend that time to me is, is critical. Uh, I, I choose my time to be right when I wake up with my coffee before my day even gets going. That's when my personal, my mind is at its sharpest. Uh, and, and I feel like, uh, the, whatever's going to happen that day has not happened yet and started distracting me. So, right. uh, the house is quiet, the pets are still asleep and you know, it's, right. um, so, so first of all, just setting that time and knowing that's when I'm gonna, that's when I'm going to do the work today is that that's my time. Um, so, so that's the, built in. That's that's built in. That's that you do that. Absolutely. Daily. Yeah. Okay. If if awesome. uh, if I have something I have to do earlier than normal, I just wake up earlier to get my piano in before it. Like okay, it's awesome. it is a sacred. It's a sacred uh, at least half hour um, every day. And yeah. And so once you carve that space out, um, it, it's for me, it's important to know what I'm going to do going into it. Uh, once you start having to make decisions about what you want to practice you're already kind of behind the eight ball, right? Because you can right. get a little neurotic, right. like, am I working on the right stuff? So so I, I, I make a plan for the week 
Um, and that way, when I wake up on Tuesday morning, I don't have to be like, hmm, what, is, what should I do? What should I do? Oh my so God, smart. 15 minutes is over. Uh, right, I haven't even done right. anything yet. Oh my God, 20 minutes is gone. You know, at least if you're like me, you start questioning yourself. So, right. so going in with that, going in with the plan. Uh, and so that, that leaves you with a clear head to really focus on on that day. When do you, when do you, when do you do that Sunday night? When you, when you sit down and kind of sketch out what you're going to practice for the week on Sunday evening or I, I actually do it, Bob, after we meet on Wednesdays. Um, okay. Cause, after cause our lesson. Yeah. It's yeah, fresh. Okay. It's fresh in my mind. We've, we've always had a great conversation and kind of talked about, I've, you've always answered some questions for me and, and we've, right. we've talked about it. And that's, that for me is the best time to just pull out my, I use, I use my iPad and I just, I just keep a little ledger of kind of the things I'm working on. Um, and yeah. I just kind of update it. Um, and, uh, and then that gives me the, the knowledge of what I'm going to tackle over the next week. Yeah. You're super duper organized with that, which is like, uh, is, is, I would have to say is the primary reason why your success, your, your growth musically has ha, just continues to be expedited each and every week. When, when it's, it is ironic that, uh, in order to make progress, you have to, you have to limit you, what you can focus on because there's so it's, it is infinite. And the, the further you get down this path, uh, the more things you feel like you're not addressing on a given right. practice session, which you, I think right. you talked about early earlier. Um, right. and so staying clear mentally about what you want to do, uh, yeah. gets harder, uh, yeah. to be honest, as you, as you get further down the road. So being organized is very, is very helpful. Correct. And there's a couple of things on that. Uh, number one, I've, you know, I've, I've mentioned this to you in the past and I know I mentioned it to students frequently that, you know, if you sit down on the piano bench and you haven't decided what you're going to practice, it's already too late. <laughs> you, 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 right. You're already, it's too late. You know, yeah. cause you're going to, that practice session is going to be very scattered. You, you, you already, you already have to know exactly what you're going to that piano for before you even sit down. Otherwise you're, you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, be, being organized that way, uh, I think getting to the realization after you study long enough, to, you, you, you realize that the various skills, uh, this, all these skills do not enjoy autonomy. They, they actually all have an impact on, you know, scales have an impact on your understanding of chords and harmony. Harmony, chords and harmony have an impact on, on your understanding of scales and, and voicings and so forth. And so um, what's, what's um, comforting is knowing that if you are, like you said, you feel like you might be neglecting a certain area. Right. In, in, real, in reality, you're not. If, if you've really kind of taken the time to map things out and understand how these things are all interrelated, that even, even if you don't physically touch something for a week and you're doing all these other skills, it's having a profound impact on, on the very scale that you haven't even touched, you know. So I think it's important to know that. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing that I want to talk about that I think is really important, and I know you're very good at it because you got your iPad all the time and you got things sketched out, you know, is what I call paper practice, right? Practice time away from the instrument. Talk, talk a little bit about how you do that and how that's been beneficial for you to study and practice away from the piano. Yeah. Yes. So especially when we first started, right. Uh, I was learning the notes of all the, all the chords of all the five sounds. Um, so, uh, it, that is very much an academic exercise and right. the keyboard I found was distracting, uh, when I was trying to learn that. And, uh, it's may not be what you, what you think of when you're like, I'm going to take some piano lessons. Okay. Let me go sit over here with my notebook. Um, you think <laughs> right, I, I'm right, going to do right, all of this right. at the piano, but, uh, right. Everybody, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, having, having thought through those things, uh, away from the piano makes it click quicker when you get to the piano. And there's, there's just no doubt in my mind about that. So, um, you know, it, it may feel like, uh, I'm not getting better at the piano when I'm over here with my notebook you know, remembering what the three, four notes of the C seventh, C dominant seventh is. Right, right, right. Um, but you are. And, uh, and so, so first of all, just knowing that, uh, that, that, that will help the physical side of it, uh, happen for you, um, is at least in my perspective, super important. And then. Yeah. Yeah. Not, and not only happen for you, but happen for you faster, faster. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is I think uh, jazz especially is uh, it can get complex theory wise and, um, right. and, and you need to have, have that understanding in your head in an organized way before, um, like you said, it'll get scattered very quickly if, if you haven't done a little bit of that pre-work. And, and so it just, it's like walking into, uh, an interview like this without having done any thinking about, you know, what you might talk about. It's going to go better, uh, if, if you've, if you've done a little bit of prep. And so that's right. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I, I've said that, I don't even know how many times I've said this on, in the various podcast episodes, but I, I know, I think it's a pretty safe bet. I at least say it one time every episode that. It's your conceptual understanding that drives your physical development, that determines your physical development. I was going to say that, so, Bob, but I didn't want to steal the line from you. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you can you can steal the line. I steal a lot. I, I, hey, John, I steal stuff all the time, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I steal stuff from students and pretend that it's mine. So, you know, uh, no, um, because uh, you know, I, I say that because it, I, I've said you know, if something's foggy upstairs. If something's complicated upstairs, if something's confusing upstairs, it's not going to get easier when you sit down and try to get it out <laughs> in your hands. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to think that, right? So yeah. the time, the time spent and and stepping away from the instrument somehow is kind of yeah. like a big sigh of relief, right? Step away from the instrument and spend time, some time sketching things out. You know, I have notepads here in my office. I sketch things out all the time. I, you know, on the coffee table at home. Uh, this is, th th these, th these are great ways to what I call steal practice time. You're actually practicing, you, you know, but you're right. You mentioned that our, our notion always is practicing means I got to be sitting, my, my rear end has to be on the bench and I have to be my, making sound. There has to yeah. be sound. And, yeah. And that's just kind of a misnomer. Yeah. When you, when you gave me the, all the different, uh, altered dominant scales to study. I knew when I saw that sheet, I was like, this is a coffee shop thing. This, <laughs> this is, <laughs> this needs, right? uh, it needs right? something different. I need to change my environment. Cause, cause a lot of that is when you look at it, you're like, man, that's, this is new and, and challenging. And, and I knew I was like, I was like, I need to get away from the piano and, and learn this. Uh, right. And that's an ongoing thing. So. Right. Right. And, you know, and isn't, um, you know, isn't this a dimension of studying music? And, I, and again, it, it really quite honestly, it doesn't have anything to do with jazz as much as it has to do with the study of music, just mm -hmm. music, period. Right. Isn't there something uh, invigorating and very rewarding about just the intellectual side of music, just studying music itself? One hundred percent. And, uh, you know, it's crazy. We, we all walk around the world. We hear music all the time. And right. uh, the the percentage of people that understand what what is happening behind inside yeah, of that right, music right, is a sliver, right? right? And it's, and right, I think right. it's I just I think right. it's interesting. It's like you, it's like you've stepped into this secret world that that Correct. is among us already. And and I I love that aspect of it. And I also think it's kind of cool that uh, you know the, there's something kind of inherently nerdy about. Uh, about this, but yet it was always the cool kids who made music, and and there's there's this like <laughs> there's this kind of dichotomy of like, right. uh, of it takes this academic study uh, to look cool at your instrument, right? You have to, you have to know right. it so well and have studied so hard to to come right. out there and be the coolest one. So <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. There's just something you know very rewarding about it. You know, I teach a lot of, um, I have quite a few senior citizens that I teach. Um, you know, you know, guys and gals that are in their 80s, in their 80s, right? And uh, they come in in the morning and we have a lesson, you know, a cup of coffee and a lesson. And they're, they're, they're such a joy. And I always say to every one of them at the end of the lesson, I go, hey, this beats the hell out of a crossword puzzle, doesn't it? And, and they, all, <laughs> right? they all go, man, I just, all, your, all your peers are down at, you know, at the retirement village doing a crossword puzzle. And you're, you're up here playing some uh, Miles Davis tune. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, how, right. I'm, I'm just curious. How do you go about on a week to week basis? 
on a week to week basis, how do you go about measuring your progress or assessing your progress? How do you personally do that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so first of all, I'm, I try to be careful on the word progress because okay. uh, it, it, it implies that, you know, we're marching towards a destination and, and, right. uh, and I don't believe that that is how this works. Um, so, so, so when I say progress, I think of um, how, how am I feeling uh, with the skills that, that we're working on? Do I feel like I can use them to make music yet? Or do I feel like they are uh, a mechanical exercise? And, and once, as they transition from one to the other, that's kind of, that's how I, that's how I conceptualize making progress at the instrument. Um, in terms of how I kind of measure it, I, this is going to sound really nerdy, but when I, I like it to be visual. So when I talk about my, my iPad, um, I tend to make grids with like the different things I'm working down, go down the left and then across the top, uh, I've got, mm -hmm. you know, a, a different variable, whether it's what key I'm working on, what tempo I'm working on, you know, and, um, and as I practice those things, you can just kind of fill in the grid and, um, that, that does two things. It, it, it reminds me that I'm completing a picture, uh, and, good, yeah. and, and it reminds me that I'm not missing stuff. You know, I, I right. sometimes worry about that, but like we talked about if, uh, you know, if you haven't touched your inversions for two weeks, um, and, uh, but you see that they're on the list, they're coming up, right. And you know, you're going to get to them. Uh, it's just, a, it takes some of that anxiety away from it, uh, for me to have it visually represented, um, what I'm, what right. I'm working on, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And it also keeps you honest too. Right. I mean, it, it, it kind of, it, it paints a picture for you on, on where you are, what you've done, what you haven't done. Yeah. Like I, when, when you first introduced the fourth e voicings to me, uh, those kept falling to the bottom of the list because they were hard and it, I didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't think they sounded good right. and, <laughs> right. and I didn't understand Everybody them does. musically. Everybody. And right. so I was like, right. you know, I'm just going to not do those and I'm going to go back to the top of my list. And then eventually you're like, there's one <laughs> thing left on this stupid chart. I guess I will start working on those. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause he, he's going to ask me about it on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah. but but, but you know, it, i think those are a good example of of something that uh i just completely not only did i not know them or i just didn't really like them uh i didn't like practicing them they didn't make sense to me musically and but i you kept kind of reminding me to work on them and, and eventually they started to come together and now i'm like i understand how to use these a little better uh they yeah. sound good to me now yeah. my ears understand yes. them and and it's like you have to have a little faith right in yes. in the process so yeah yeah because you know it, you're not alone everyone including myself when first introduced to chordal voicings fourthy voicings right very odd because we're used to we're used to sounds built on thirds mm -hmm. right not not four so not only is it odd to the ears but it's also odd to the hand because yeah. it's a different different type of shape altogether so there's just a lot of oddness going on here right yeah and yeah i think it falls to the bottom of everyone's list and uh so that, that's a great example that's that's <laughs> it's so funny man it, it's absolutely so funny but you know to go back to uh that that word progress how you said you you, you don't like to think it like we're marching towards something i think that's i think that's very powerful because uh you know, I think the greatest progress quite honestly is happening at the greatest times of struggle but we don't we don't pick up on that Right. So that's yeah. why that's a very that's a very interesting word to use, because, um, you, you know, I'll have students come in and they feel like they this happens all the time. It happens with you in, in our lessons. You, you know, you'll say, oh, you know, I didn't uh, you know, it was a tough week. I didn't get much done. I kind of struggled, you know, not, you know, and, and then you have like the best lesson that you've ever had. You know, it's like because I think through the struggle that I mean. We, don't we all wish that progress was just a cons a consistent uptick, a constant uptick? That that I mean, I'm, progress was a consistent uptick. Yeah. Right? We just yeah. It, it just it just keeps going up, just like this. It just keeps mm. going up, but it doesn't happen that way, right? We have these plateaus where we struggle, we struggle, we struggle, we struggle, and then bam, growth. And then we struggle, we struggle, we struggle, we struggle, and then bam, 
growth, right? And so I, I, I try to remind students all the time that, you know, the BAM, the growth, never happens without the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle. Yeah, and those moments sneak up on you. Uh, you, you won't realize when you have them uh, until it's over, right? I, I had right. some, some right. friends over for a pool party and it started raining and I had just gotten a new piano. And they were all kind of like, well, you know, John, <laughs> now's your time. I was really, <laughs> a little really pressure. Ner- yeah, yeah, you know, really nervous. Uh, but, uh... but I realized, like, I, I know how to improvise in front of people now. Um, yeah, it's and awesome. and it, uh, you know, it's that that was a moment where I was like, I this isn't just the thing I can do to myself. I can do it, um, right. and hopefully bring something to someone else. Uh, and, and and your friends enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah and, right. You know, at least they said they did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Pro- I promise you. They did. Yeah. Well, it's it's probably more relaxing than, you know, hearing me try to bust out a Chopin prelude that's, you know. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's right. a little more approachable. Yeah. So. um, So what are what are your long term aspirations with the study of piano, the study of jazz? What what what? kind of paint the big picture for us. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very open-minded about, about where this heads. Um, I would, I would in the near term, I would like to be able to, uh, play tunes, right. Uh, play them in a way that sounds nice. Um, that has a little bit of aspect of something I brought to it. So, uh, so that's, that's kind of the near term goal, but long term, I've, I, I feel like I have a lot of creative ideas in my head. Um, musically, a lot of melodies come come fluent or come quickly to me, and and then they develop into things in my mind. And I don't always have the skill harmonically to support them, uh, and and they kind of end up going nowhere. So um, so long term, I feel like I would like to be able to fully develop those things um, with with kind of a complete understanding of of what's happening musically with them so that uh so they can sound like finished products and not just dabbling um yeah and and yeah. so i think i think you know composition improvisation um and uh i i'm still interested in electronic music um a little different than the the club stuff that i used to like but uh, but eventually i would like to take my understanding of of this music and and bring it to that um, you know, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 You, you know, the long term, what's neat, uh, I think you would concur with this that it's, it's, it's fantastic that you're at a stage in your musical development now that you realize that it's forever. In yeah. other words, right? So many people start the study of piano, uh, and, because it never ever does turn into a creative venture. It never turns into an artistic adventure and always remains kind of a mechanical, mathematical, academic exercise that they eventually end up quitting. Mm-hmm. And that's really sad, you know? And so what I get thrilled about is I know that you're at the stage right now to where you realize you've, you've crossed over, right? And you realize that, man, this is a part of who I am forever yeah forever and the study of music and the study of piano is something that i can enjoy forever for the rest of my life when and when we have our lessons we have we often uh it's maybe not the right word but we call it the grunt work right so right the the learning learning the fundamentals the most important thing i think of of the last year has been uh my ability to to figure out how to enjoy the grunt work um, right. to love, so love the process, right? I, right. The, the whole, everything around waking up, getting my coffee, showing up at the keyboard and, um, and pressing the keys that I'm working on that day, like that alone, it's, it's meditative and it brings me a lot of joy. Uh, and, um, it's not about, uh, anything more than that. Sometimes, sometimes just, just showing up and, and, and doing that thing is, is fulfilling enough. And, uh, so if, if there's any advice I could give to other listeners, it'd be figure out how to love that little pocket of time that you spend at the keyboard, uh, mm-hmm. because 
then it doesn't matter what you're working on. Uh, the just right. the the act of going there and doing it is is the that is the reward. Um, and and so, yeah, that that is yeah. my number one number one thing I would I would try to communicate to other students is is figure out how to love that aspect of it. Well, and it, uh, nicely said, nicely said, my friend, because that uh, enjoy all of it, right? Enjoy the good days and enjoy the bad days, right? Because yeah. not every day's not every day's you're not every day you're going to hit it out of the park uh, with your piano practicing, and 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 that's just a fact of life. That's for everyone. There's days I get up. Uh, from playing the piano and I'm just like, okay, forget it, man. I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do something else. (laughs) You know, know? I mean, that's just, that's just part of the process, but that's what makes it, you know, that's what I've said. I've said this many times. That's what makes this such a great endeavor um, is because it's not a model airplane. It's not something that you kind of put together and then put on the shelf and you go, okay, I'm done with that. Now what? It's something that we enjoy and we um, grow grow with for the rest of our lives yeah yeah musicians never finish right they all right that's right <laughs> you're that's never right. like i've accomplished music now uh it's you know <laughs> <laughs> right it's it's, it's it a never, you know, never ongoing happens. thing you can you can make it more complex and then resimplify there's there's so many different ways you can take it um and you know that's right. that is the joy of it yeah and you know it's it's so great too that you know you have uh, when it comes to musical taste, uh, you have a lot of different irons in the fire and, and you love a lot of different things. And, you know, like the electronic music that you're, that you speak of. And, and what's really neat is that, you know, um, it's, you, you know, we're studying jazz piano, right? And I'm doing mm-hmm. air quotes here, but the reality of it is, John, we're studying music, right? Absolutely. We're studying, yeah. we're studying music and, and, and you're going to be equipped to, you're going to be equipped to actually go whatever directions you want to go with throughout your life musically, because you're armed with the, uh, the arsenal, the proper arsenal to, uh, explore any genre of music, quite yeah. honestly. Modern music is, is built on jazz, uh, especially right. har- harmonically. So, um, right. Yeah. Right. So, well, um, man, I cannot begin to tell you. I just want to take this opportunity here publicly to the jazz piano skills audience to, to just tell you how much of a joy it's been to get to know you over the last the last year. I'm so I'm so grateful for uh, jazz piano skills connecting us. And uh, it's been just a thrill, not not only musically, man, but just your friendship as well. It's just uh, it's an honor to just be able to call you my friend. Yeah, Bob, you're an absolute mensch. Uh, the 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 process of getting to know you and getting to know this music with you has been uh, super fulfilling. And uh, you know, long may it continue. Oh, it will, man. It will. I thank you so much, John, for for your time today, and and really appreciate it. And I know, I know, I speak on behalf of all the listeners at Jazz Piano Skills. It's uh, it's been a wonderful hour with you and sharing your experience and background. And I know it's touched a lot of people as well. And they certainly can all relate in 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 one way or in many ways, for sure. No doubt about it. So on behalf of all the piano uh, listeners at Jazz Piano Skills, a, a huge hearty thank you to you, my friend. Thank you, Bob. All right. So John Gray, what an afternoon, what an hour it has been. Thank you, my friend, and we will be talking soon.